Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you've got some, if you've got some experience using WebEx or online before, if you can maybe give us a bit of a thumbs up or a uh, happy emoji or tell us how you're feeling, um, just so we know that uh, everybody can hear us, that would be awesome. Um, or even just put a, a Y in the chat box at the moment would be brilliant. Oh, it's all their hands. Oh, excellent. We've got some very tech savvy parents there. Brilliant. <laughs> um, so I'm Jenny Yates. I'm the um, program coordinator for STEM at Ashdown Secondary College and head of ICT. And hi, I'm Hannah James. I am one of the deputies, and uh, part of my portfolio is looking after STEM. I am going to be on the computer side of things tonight, so you'll see me um, popping in, letting people in. Um, if you do have any questions while we're going through the presentation, um, if you just go down to your chat and type in a question, um, and I'll let uh, Deb know um, anything that's super pressing. Just to let you know that we are recording tonight, um, and this is so that we can share it with people that aren't able to make it. So um, we ask you to please keep your um, videos off and to keep yourself muted um, because we are videoing. Um, and we hope you find tonight really informative. Um, and um, yeah, so mm -hmm. Deb, I'm going to let you take control of the screen and um, share what we have. Sure. So you're going to lose our faces for a minute while I actually bring up a presentation and I'm going to take you through that. Um, as Hannah said, yep, very happy to take the questions and we'll allow time for questions at the end. Um, yeah, so save them up or, or just post them as you see them and, and um, Hannah will keep a record of them there. All right. Okay, so that should be a very familiar screen to you all. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. So we're here to talk about the ICT Approved Specialist Program for 2023, um, which I know that seems like a long time away, but we get started pretty early and we're asking for people to put their expressions of interest in very soon. Um, so here's your chance to find out all about it. And um, hopefully we get to share a fair bit with you. So why ICT and STEM? Um, so I guess I'll start by, by saying that there are two components of the program. There's two separate classes that run under the Approved Specialist Program, which is our Creative Technologies Institute. And so that's where we really focus on the technologies and our STEM Institute. Now, the reason we do it is that we know, as I'm sure you all know, especially seeing you're here, that um, so much of what we're looking at in the future will need some of those STEM skills, that STEM content knowledge and the technology content knowledge. Um, you know, we've got examples of things like we don't have uh, heaps of people at the airport anymore greeting us. We all do self check in, we do self check out at supermarkets. All of that revolves around using technology skills and a range of different STEM skills. Um, so, this is probably not news to most of the people here um, watching, but it just sets the um, rationale for why we've moved into this space and why we work so hard about making um, our institutes uh, effective and engaging for our students. All right, um, these are just some examples of some of the interesting jobs out there that actually do exist now um, that we may never have even heard of before. Um, and there's a range of these things that people don't even think about. Virtual reality designer. Uh, if your students join these programs, they'll actually move into that space themselves a little bit. We do do some creation of VR content ourselves. Um, there's lots of jobs within cybersecurity, uh, you know, not just hacking the way we think it, but the elements of psychology mixed with technology to um, address cybersecurity issues and going and trying to find um, vulnerabilities in systems. Um, we have cybernetic engineers uh, to do with robotic, robotics and linkages with the human body, um, a whole range of different opportunities out there. Um, and yeah, not all jobs are super techy though. So we need to look at jobs like science communicator as well. It's a huge one nowadays to actually be able to communicate science um, concepts to, to whether it be students or, or other people out there as well. So um, yeah, lots of interesting jobs in the future for your kids. I'm gonna keep ticking along. Um, so we want our students to have the skills and opportunities to not be a victim of the future changes, but be someone who can take advantage of them and thrive. So it's not just about um, teaching them the technical skills, it's about teaching them the, what we call future ready skills as well, to make sure they're ready for what's going to come in the future. And that's things like being innovative, problem solving, because not everything will be laid out black and white for them. They're going to have to find solutions to things as they go along. So I've got a question for you. Mm. So I've got a question from chat. Mm -hmm. Can you please explain what a professional triver is? Professional triver? My understanding of professional triver is someone who brings groups together. So really draws upon those collaboration and communication skills um, and often um, is used in 
I think organizations like um, Google and mm -hmm. those sorts of organizations will have people bring others together and might facilitate discussions. So that's my understanding when I've read it before. Um, all of those uh, avatars are from um, the Tech Trails website, uh, which is put together by Women in Technology of WA. So you can go and find out a little bit more about some of those jobs as well on there if you like. Hope that answers the question. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> okay. Um, so in 2023, as we currently do, we'll offer the choice of both the Creative Technologies Institute and the STEM Institute classes. Um, now, it's an either or, um, a student can't be part of both, so they do need to be to make a choice at some point. Um, that doesn't have to be on the expression of interest um, stage, though. So when you're asked to put an EOI in for um, our approved specialist program, you can put we'd like our child to be considered for both of them. Um, and then when it comes down to after the assessment stage, we will offer one or the other. Um, and you can tell us what your priority is as well. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, both of them at the moment. So Creative Tech Institute, um, it delivers an accelerated and enriched digital technologies curriculum. Um, it probably focuses a little bit more on things like graphic media, sorry, graphic design, photo media, still coding in there, still some robotics, um, a bit focused on entrepreneurial skills and some project work, uh, still some video game design in there, um, possibly going and moving into electronics and circuitry. Um, but it will depend a little bit on the class. I know when I teach the classes, I actually gauge the students' interests before I finalise the program when I'm talking about the technical um, classes that we're doing. So they get to use the TV studio, um, our cameras, 3D printers, which I think we now have four, five, I think six at the school and uh, certain times of the year, they're all going nonstop. Um, we have VR equipment, including a class set of virtual reality goggles. Um, and we have a creative lab, um, you know, including robotics equipment, and we have um, a lot of computer labs uh, floating around as well. Okay. So um, that's what the Creative Tech Institute would involve. Um, there's some photos of students in previous years that have participated in it. So um, projects using the laser cutter, that's also something that runs hot pretty much all year round, and we have two of them. Uh, STEM Institute. Um, provides uh, similar experiences with the Digitech curriculum. So actually goes into a lot of project work and covers uh, things like mechatronics using the laser cutters again, uh, 3D printers, coding, um, but will also provide enriched and accelerated curriculum across science and maths. And they will stay together as a class and be, um, we would expect them to be a fairly high performing class in all three of those areas. Um, but yeah, science and maths as well. So if you've got a student who loves technology, but maybe is a little bit you know weak at maths, doesn't mean that you know, there's not an opportunity for them. They might love the idea of the Creative Tech Institute, but if you've got a student who loves science and maths and, and, and has an interest in tech, then the STEM Institute is probably a really good opportunity. And that's something that you can have a chat with your, your child about and, and make that decision. Um, just some photos of things that happen in that space as well. Um, we do have Mendel's Garden as well. Um, different teachers have used that for different purposes. At the various times we've had hydroponics and we've used sensors in the garden. Um, yeah, just a few things happening there. Um, you're welcome to go and have a look at some of our STEM events and some of our activities at the college. If you just search on Ashdale Secondary College on YouTube, you'll find some entertaining videos if you're bored on one <laughs> evening. <laughs> All right, um, this is a little bit of a summary because we often get asked, well, what is the difference? Let's let's bed this down. So we try to break it down a little bit here for you. Um, the We ask students and parents to make a commitment to the program from year seven to year nine. Um, we The curriculum focus is predominantly digital technologies um, within the Creative Tech Institute and digital technologies as well as science and maths in the STEM Institute. Um, how do students get their places in the program? First of all, they apply um, and then we'll do some online testing um, and possibly an interview. That doesn't happen too often now. We find students get very, very nervous about that. So we don't want to put them in that position, um, but they'll have to participate um, after the online testing. If they make it through to the, the next stage, they'll participate in a range of STEM and ICT based activities, uh, which will involve some individual work and also some group work. We want to see how they go working together and using those future ready skills. So. Uh, they have two hours of ICT each um, week. Um, the uh, regular student would have one hour of digital technologies and that's all each week. Mm. Plus we do a before or after school class, traditionally a before school class that um, we ask you and them to commit to. That's one hour a week as well. And that's where we either get to spend some time in the creative lab or doing projects or developing their skills. 
And at the moment, we rotate different teachers through that class so they can learn from um, five different teachers and get a, a big range of skills over the year that they use for a project term in term four. Um, they only stay together in the ICT class for the Creative Tech Institute. They stay together for all three of the classes, including science and maths in the STEM Institute. And we do ask that all students have a laptop or a MacBook for both of the programs, please. Um, an iPad just isn't necessarily compatible with all of the different um, equipment and, and hardware that we use. So that is one requirement that we do um, ask parents to please invest in that. Okay, just got another question. Sure. Um, will my child still be able to study high level maths in senior in senior years if she's part of the creative program instead of the STEM Institute? 100%. Um, yes, so normally both of these pathways actually lead to a very high proportion of our students moving into ATAR. Mm -hmm. I believe our um, Ducks from last year was actually came through the Creative Tech Institute yes. program. Yes. Um, so that, that gives you an indication. Um, so both of them will definitely lead to whatever pathway they want. And we still have um, opportunities with great teachers in maths that will still give them those opportunities. It's not the only maths um, class that will provide that extension opportunity for them. So another question about the tech, um, mm -hmm. an iPad Pro. Now that probably doesn't have the, um, the data or the hardware allowance mm. to, to run the program. Not necessarily, yeah. Often we'll need um, to be able to plug into um, the USBs for different things, whether it be um, the uh, robots, the uh, Lego robots or uh, Makey Makers. We don't use them as much or a micro bit, and that's normally more compatible with an actual um, yeah, laptop or, or MacBook computer. So happy to chat more about that if you wanted to send me a separate email at some point for whoever that was there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, so people often ask a bit more about the testing process. Um, the mm. testing normally involves a general ability test, which is sort of a fairly generic one, and a mathematics-based test. Um, especially for the STEM Institute, we really do want to see what level of um, skill the, the students have in maths, because if we put students who really find it hard, then it's very demotivating. Mm. So I'm motivating. I did, stu I did study to be an English yeah. teacher as well. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's uh, the first thing that will happen. Um, and then they may go on to do further assessment on a fun design or engineering task um, and then following a computer tutorial and activity as well. Um, and, and they're all supported by some of our STEM teachers. Yeah. Um, so uh, we look for those STEM skills or future ready skills such as communication, collaboration, problem solving and creativity. Um, and the exact testing format and location will be decided a little bit closer to the date, depending on the current COVID restrictions. Some of it may occur at the primary schools if you're a cluster primary school, um, and we may just have some out of area students come in, but um, later on in term two, we'll know a little bit more yeah. around that. It's a very movable feast at the moment. <laughs> um, so I've just popped some key dates up here for you as well. Um, information, we would normally have gone and presented to the primary schools, but weren't able to do so because of COVID restrictions. So information packs should have gone out to the primary schools. Um, if you haven't received that, um, just maybe ask the, the year six teacher um, or contact me and I can follow up on it. Um, parent information evening, well, here we are. <laughs> Not in person, but it's still a pretty great way of doing it. Um, and we're going to give you till um, the start of uh, week two of term two to get the expression of interest in and that will allow us to pop a little reminder on the Facebook page and those sorts of things. We are pretty strict with getting your EOI in when it comes in because otherwise it starts um, being unfair um, and, and often we go through quite a process to decide on um, you know organising when testing is going to happen so we have to set a date and we do stick to that date so it's um, upset a few people in the past but we are fairly diligent with that so please please get your expression of interest in on time. Um, and the testing we're anticipating will happen sometime in week six or seven. And then after that, the sort of the following week, we'll send out offers. If your child isn't successful in getting a first round offer, we do have a waiting list and um, we will consider those students in a second round offer, which I'll be honest and say we do regularly get to. So it's not all um, bad news if they don't get a first round offer. Okay, I've got a couple more questions mm -hmm. through Debbie. Sure. So, um, is a gaming Windows based laptop okay? Yep, no problem. I've that's fine. Yep, uh, I've worked with most students have MacBooks, but I have had a number with Windows based laptops as well, and it's fine. Uh, what do you mean by an ASP testing? So that would uh, be Ashdale Specialist Program. No, approved approved specialist program. Sorry. So, um, yeah, so ICT approved specialist program gets to be a bit of a mouthful. So <laughs> we do abbreviate it to ASP. We yeah. do like our um, acronyms in teaching as well as many other industries. And that would be. The the general um, ability and the maths. Yes, the, general, yeah. the testing, yes. Then plus some software and engineering design yeah. project work later on. 
Um, now I've got this one from Chris. Um, how do we get an info pack? Uh, mm -hmm. or yeah, or if attending an out of plus department. Sure. Yeah, so, um, a lot of um, we've actually dropped some packs off to four of the out of area schools as well. Um, Hocking, Pearsall, uh, Marangaroo, and Rawlinson should have got it. But if you're from somewhere else, that's totally fine. Um, what I'll get you to do is, um, I think my email address comes up at the end. Um, send me through a request and I'll send that to our, our lovely enrollments officer who will send something out to you. Otherwise, um, all of the information will pretty much be on the link that you'll see down below there as well. And I know you probably are either writing furiously to get that down, but you, you don't need to. You can just go to the Ashdale website and that will come up just by typing in Ashdale Secondary College. And um, it's actually one of the headers on page one uh, where it talks about the ICT approved specialist program and that will take you to all of that information. But anything you're not sure about, you can just either email the general Ashdale address or myself as well. Okay, another couple of really good questions. Mm -hmm. um, how many places are available in each program? Mm -hmm. um, and do you focus on giving students in the catchment area priority? Sure. So um, each class will take up to 32 students. So that's 64 places available across both classes. Um, we It is a department endorsed um, approved specialist program. So we do have some out of area um, places available. There's not a set amount. Obviously, we are always very um, proactive in engaging with our cluster students. Um, so the majority of places definitely go to, to cluster students just by default of how many apply. Um, but there are a number that will go to out of area students as well. Um, and, and that's something that, that's um, led by the Department of Education. Um, can students participate in the ICT program if they are also taking part in the autism program? Um, offered at Ashdale? Uh, yes, they can. We do have discussions with the, um, the CELP uh, program prior to that, just to make sure that we've got um, adequate support during those class times as well. Um, and just, I guess, while that question is being asked, so yep, so the um, CELP program is fine, as our Netball and Soccer Academy, as is Music Academy. Our um, timetabling deputy works extremely hard <laughs> to make sure they can make it all work. So um, we don't want them to miss out on any of those opportunities. And I think a, a balanced student makes for a great student. Yeah. So another question is, can you do both programs? Can you do the specialist um, ICT and the STEM program? No, you can't. It's it's an either or. So um, definitely, if, you, if you're happy to be considered for both, put down mm -hmm. um, your preference and say that I would be considered for the other on the application form, and there should be room to do that. Um, but yeah, when it comes down to it, you'll only be offered a spot in one of the programs at the end. Well, not you, the child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep ticking on, and we'll do some more questions in a minute. Um, and talking about some of those other programs, this is just a little bit of a slide to show you a little bit more about some of the other things we do have. We do have a great soccer and netball academy. Um, I believe we've also got some, it's not an academy as such, but we have some great AFL programs if okay. you follow the other type of football. Um, our music specialist program is amazing with some phenomenal teachers there as well. And obviously we have great subjects all around, um, food, visual arts. I don't know if any of you have been to our art um, exhibition, our uh, the collective at the end of the year. Showcase. If you haven't, please come to our collective and showcase. It's normally in week nine. Um, the work that those students put together is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I think better than I see at the art gallery sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. And we have a really good d &T area who does some pretty exciting things in terms of um, solar vehicles, uh, robotics and um, mechatronics, drones. So there's so many opportunities available for for students at Ashdale, not just in the specialist programs. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, all this information will also be available on um, the website. Um, we will send you the, um, I think we may even get Francis to put a link on the website yep. for this recording. So yes. that's another possibility, or at least an email that you can request the link from. Um, yeah. So that is my, I do recommend you write that address down. Um, you can shoot me through emails. I may forward it on to our enrolments officer if it's enrolment related, because I'm not the guru in that area. Um, but I, yeah, I welcome you to write that email address down so that you can get in touch with, with me for any other questions. But I'm happy to take further questions now. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let Hannah ask me. We're going to do an okay. interview back and forth here. You're very nice. <laughs> Uh, so, um, is there any way that children can prepare for the testing? Is there anything that you would recommend that they do, a particular program or? Not not really. Uh, the general ability testing, it's very hard to prepare for. Mm. Um, they may have done something similar at school. Um, you know, I guess if your student is, um, you know, weaker at maths, obviously, just maybe, and they're really desperately wanting to get into the STEM Institute rather than the Creative Tech Institute, 
course, it's a good incentive for everybody to improve their math skills, but I, I can't point you to go and do this workbooklet or anything like that. Um, we really just want the, the students, you know, natural aptitude in those testings yes. when we do it. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And I think um, all tests are way the same. So whether it's the math test, the gate test or the projects test, they all kind of um, are just as important as each other? Um, it is slightly different for the STEM Institute and the Creative Tech Institute. So the STEM Institute, we will weight the maths results a little bit higher because it is so important that if we're going to be doing extended maths opportunities that the student is strong in that area, less important with the Creative Tech Institute. Yep. Okay. Is there any more questions coming that through? That's all the questions yeah. I've got so far, but please send your questions through um, if you have anything else. But like Deb said, we're always available um, either at, at the college by either emailing Deb or, Deb or phoning mm -hmm. um, and going to our website if you want to explore a little bit more what, about what the college has to offer. Um, we are a STEM uh, ICT science school, but we offer a lot more. So by sending your students to Ashda, that they are really getting a nice, really holistic approach to their education. Mm -hmm. um, okay, another question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please take us through the expression of interest form? Okay, it's actually very simple. It really mm -hmm. is. Uh, if you've done an enrollment form for any school, it'd be very, very similar. Um, name, uh, address, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's just, um, there'd be a tick box with um, what um, particular program you're interested in, whether it be STEM or the- um, I think it gets you to put a one or two in your first preference and your second preference. Um, and yes, I can just see somebody's asked a little bit about the brief statement. We do ask that the student fill that in and it is generally pretty obvious if the student hasn't filled it in, the parent <laughs> has. Um, so that's just to give us a little bit of an insight into making sure that the student actually knows what the program involves is, is uh, yeah, what it involves as well and is interested in it themselves. So it doesn't have to be a work of art. It's not an essay. It's just, you know, I want to know if the kid loves um video game design and has got some experience in scratch or you know really wants to learn more about photoshop then that's really cool stuff for me to know as a one of the teachers of the program um it's great for us to see that as well on the application forms will there be confirmation of the receipt of application once it's submitted i believe when you email it through that once again not my um, area that goes to our enrollment officer um but she i think is generally pretty good about a receipt if you don't get it, um, I would suggest you write back to, hey, Mari, just checking that you received this, please. Um, and yeah, that would be yeah highly recommended um, because I believe her default is to send a, hey, thanks very much. Are there any resources available? Uh, what what was that in relating to? Have you got any more confirmation on that? or Not at this point, but I think if you definitely go to our website, you'll be able yep. to find more information. Um, or again, contact Deb or myself at the school um, and we can go through any questions that you might have specifically. Mm. So what kind of careers does creative program uh, lean towards? So we looked at it at the very, very beginning. Mm. Um, so Deb, do you want to just quickly read? Sure. Read so it could lead towards anything, anything involved in tech. Um, what we actually teach in that area is a little bit dependent upon the student's interests. Um, and I mentioned at the start that we're going to do, uh, I do a survey at the start with my classes to see how they're more interested in programming, robotics, um, graphic design, but it could lead to any of those ca careers that I've just mentioned. So maybe a career in mechatronics, maybe a career in, in graphic design or photo media or uh, virtual reality creation or game design. So any of them are possibilities. Our role that we see in those first three years that we have them in the program, year seven to nine, is to develop an interest and a passion for technology in STEM. And then hopefully the students go on to pick those subjects and maybe pursue those careers in the future. And we work really hard to give them opportunities, um, incursions. Uh, we've got, uh, we're taking one of our classes to SciTech tomorrow. Um, we participated in a science uh, international forum with schools from Japan, mm -hmm. China, Indonesia and India the other day, developing those um, networks with other schools and seeing how science works in those countries as well. So providing those extra opportunities for our students is part of us trying to engage them in those future careers. Okay, um, we can choose, so we can choose which program we'd like to enrol and mm -hmm. then is it based on our performance to which one we get into? Um, it is to some extent, yes. So if you said um, you would like to be part of the, the STEM program as your first preference, but maybe, um, you know, maths is not um, the strength that we need as, as part of the STEM Institute, then we would offer you a spot in the Creative Tech Institute. Um, generally, if you say, I only want to be considered for one, we will only consider you for one. I don't believe in going and chasing students and parents down if they're not interested in something. To me, we could have problems further down the track if the student's not likely to be engaged in the other program and they're not interested in it at that point. 
are they going to be interested in year nine? So, um, yeah, if you really are open to both programs, feel free to put your preference down, but I recommend putting a one and a two down. Okay. Um, can we physically drop the forms off at the office? Absolutely. Yep. yep. That'd be fantastic. Yep. Make sure you have your mask on. Yes, please have your mask. <laughs> uh, we are at Deb's house this evening, hence why we're not wearing our mask. Mm -hmm. um, is a portfolio required? No, we don't ask for a portfolio. It was something we did many years ago. So if you've got um, a niece or nephew or an older sibling, we, we did once ask the students to prepare projects, but it's really hard to know who's done the work on projects. So we actually took that um, that system away of assessing and we now um, sort of mm -hmm. do all of our assessment on site. Yeah. Um, are there any camps or competition type excursions? Um, look, we love the idea of a camp. Um, it's obviously been very hard in the last couple of years and we haven't always had enough students interested to um, make it worth pursuing. We do have a um, graduation excursion at the end of year nine where we celebrate the student successes in the program and the fact that you know they've accomplished so much during the time. And we do have a range of excursions. I think other excursions we've got picked up for this year is the Construction Future Centre. We've taken students to the Resources Showcase, Chamber of Mineral Energy and Resources, um, we've got another excursion happening, I think, again, to the ECU Super Lab um, and also looking, working with the cybersecurity department. Uh, Mr. Elon and myself ran a competition the other day where Ashdale actually was the top WA school and top public school in the country um, where we competed in a cybersecurity contest. So mm -hmm. we'll provide as many of those sorts of opportunities as they come up for our students. Okay, that's all. We Oh, no, it's one more has come through. Yeah, thank you very much. That's lovely feedback. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I have to say that Deb, Deb and her team put in so much work um, in this in this particular area. Um, but the students we have are really uh, fantastic as well. So it's it's a joy to work with the students. Oh, yeah, lots um, of fun. And, and our staff. So mm -hmm. thank you for your messages. Yes. Um, is this course for students who have a great interest or already has um, some background knowledge and experience? So someone who's interested but doesn't necessarily have any experience, would that still be applicable for them? Um, I think both. So because uh, it would be very unusual for any student to come to me with knowledge in all of the areas that we're going to cover. So whether they've got background knowledge or not, um, yeah, they would be very welcome to apply for the program. You know, we uh, take students into levels that they might not go into until more senior years of schooling generally. Um, I think... You know, one thing I always say to the students is I often start with say a graphics portfolio using um, Adobe products to begin with. And not every student loves it. Some students find, I don't know, using the pen tool in Illustrator extremely hard, for example, but then they might absolutely love the coding that we do later on in the year. Um, so I think, you know, it's always a case of saying to students, well, you might not love absolutely everything in the program, but you'll learn something. Um, and hopefully that we get a really balanced range of students and they help each other and support each other as we go along too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one question is about the girls um, STEM, STEM camp. So that's a day camp where the students come to, the girls come from the cluster primary, come mm -hmm. to the school uh, for a day. Is there a boy STEM camp? Uh, no, there's not. Um, we So that is for the primary school students um, and female students are still very underrepresented in um, STEM subjects. And that's one of our methods of engaging students at a really early age. Um, we have also set up the STEM Champions model where students come with their parents to after school workshops yeah. and that's available to boys as well. And we try and um, pick things that are going to be interesting, all interesting for all of our students on those workshops too. So the boys don't get left out. We still provide opportunities for them and we've actually run some STEM days at the primary schools um, for students of both genders as well. Yeah. Mm. You're welcome. So thank you everyone for the lovely messages. It's, it's yeah. nice. Um, we're glad that we found that you have found this information session um, helpful and informative. Mm -hmm. um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> time for dinner. Us too. Time for dinner. That sounds good to me. Um, so again, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you do have any further questions or if you feel like we haven't covered something that you'd like, please either contact myself or Deb at the school yep. um, and Debbie's email is there on, um, on the screen for you. So enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, we look forward to meeting your children um, and, and fingers crossed um, they can be part of our program next year. For sure. I've just noticed one other question. Come through. If you want to go, feel free to go for those of you who are happy they've got everything answered. 
other one. I'll just answer this one as well. Oh, yes. um, about Adobe Photoshop, yes, um, we do use it. We don't ask parents to pay for that subscription anymore. We used to when it was, I think, $9 a month. Now that it's up to $30 plus a month, we don't. Um, we do all the work for that actually at school. Um, we do have some other ones that we'll refer students to that they can use for free, um, such as uh, Photopia or Photopia or Photop, depending on how you want to pronounce it. That's very similar to Photoshop, but at school we do use industry standard software and then students can continue to develop their skills at home with some of these free packages as well. Okay. All right. I think I think we're just about to hit oh, it's seven o'clock. We've got one more message. That's fine. If you did miss some of um tonight, so it has been recorded and we will put the link on the website. So you're more than welcome to sit down and watch this all over again if you like. <laughs> um we have hit seven o'clock, so absolutely. We will say good night to you uh, and we look forward to seeing you and your children um, hopefully with us next year. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.